Pete McGuire joining us from XM. Pete, good morning to you. So uh, you've had a good chance last couple of days to digest what went on in the States on Friday with those jobs numbers. It was a bit of a mixed picture, wasn't it? Uh, because obviously the non-farm payrolls uh, came in higher than expected. But then, of course, we had um, the uh, unemployment figure, which was um, higher than expected. Well, 5.8 to 5.9. Good morning, Andrew. Yes, certainly was. But 850,000, I thought, shot the lights out of the park. It was a very strong number. Uh, that was, I think, demonstrated with the US equities, the way that they bounced and the NASDAQ up, you know, 0.81. You had a very strong move there, S&P and the Dow. So I think that that overall confidence was very, very well felt. Not a lot of news coming out this week, but uh, yeah, overall sentiments relatively strong leading into July. Yeah, in fact, we saw those Treasury yields falling, um, you know, in the wake of those job numbers, and the US dollar also coming off. Did that surprise you at all? No, it didn't. The US dollar index still at 92.27, Andrew. I think there was a little bit of exhaustion to the upside on that one. It bounced from that low we saw over the last week down to 91.8. Now it's back up to that 92.27. So it's been a fairly um, consistent whip soaring. But, uh, you know, some of those currencies have given up those losses. They've bounced a little bit to the upside. We saw a bit of a move up there, certainly for the Aussie. I'm looking even, you know, the yen, the pound. Uh, yeah, some of them have just had a little bit of an uptick. So it hasn't been a bad week for, or bad few days for currency traders. It's been not too bad at all, actually. Yeah, so what do you think, particularly in the States, what are investors going to be looking for? Because I mean, quite a bit of action happening locally in Australia. I'll get to that in a moment. But of course, we've got the yeah. um, uh, Independence Day holiday, uh, Monday holiday in the States. Um, beyond that, what data are they going to be looking for? There's not a lot coming out this week, Andrew. It's going to be a slow summer week in the States. And that's going to be, I think, uh, everyone celebrating 4th of July, getting through the COVID and I think back to spending and, and back to enjoying life a little bit. The weather's very hot over there. So I'm sure a lot of people are c certainly, you know, from a celebration standpoint, enjoying themselves. And I think this week you might see a further uptick as far as US equities. They'll probably just, you know, edge higher and higher. It's boom each week. It's been very, very strong. And I can't see anything really to take that momentum away at the moment. Yep. OK, well, let's then focus locally. Now, of course, uh, all eyes on the RBA tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, what are your expectations, Pete? Well, our mob, yeah, we've, we've got... I'm not really expecting a great deal, Andrew. I just want to see what the rhetoric is, what the what the mood is. I'm, I'm sure that uh, as far as in, interest rate uh, tick-ups, we'll probably see February for New Zealand, the, the first cab off the rank. That's the talk at the moment. Where Australia plays and, you know, are we far behind that? Are we, you know, April, May next year as far as the first leg up? Uh, I just want to basically hear the rhetoric, hear the noise and, uh, and take on board what happens to the Aussie and general themes. We're not doing too bad. The vaccination and uh, overall health of the economy. I'm at Coogee and I'll tell you what, there's plenty of people enjoying the sunshine, Andrew.